Hey, it's Todd. Oh my God, how are you? What's wrong? Oh my God, something's wrong. Something is wrong, honey. Todd would not have come on unless something was wrong. Something, oh God, oh God, I do not deal with, I do not deal with conflict well. Something is definitely wrong. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my God, <laughs> something's definitely wrong. Why would he come on to the opening of the podcast unless something was wrong? Why do you think something's wrong? I don't know, he just wouldn't have come on the opening unless something was wrong. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my God, something's definitely wrong. Oh my God, what? I don't need to start my Friday like this. Why can't it ever be okay? I know what happened. I know what happened. They, they, they didn't record the show again. I bet that's what happened. Oh, no. Why is everything... Why do you have to be so negative? I'm not being negative. Why do you... So... Oh. Oh. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> oh, Chris Miller, that was nice what you wrote. You wrote it in a funny way, but I liked it. Michael or Michelle Sanchez, we're going to do your bit. Oh, I have not forgotten. No, no, no. Tonight's a good night. Oh, by the way, you know how the opening, how I always rush? Well, I figured out why. Because I... I want to take my time. Like in my head, I want to do the opening. We get a cup of coffee. I go, here's what we did, and here's a few things I want to plug, and just nice and slow. But when the guests are there, I always feel like I'm in a hurry because I know what it's like when you do another podcast and they go, all right, just sit there for 10 minutes and we'll get through some business. So from now on, I'm going to do the opening, not this week, like this. All that stuff when I want to take some time and acknowledge some emails. This show we do it with Graham in the room. And by the way, Graham was not hurrying us. The guests are always like, take your time. But I feel hurried because even though they say it's okay, I know they're bored. They want to be. They want to get to the part where they're part of the show. But from now on, we're going to do the opening. We're going to try it. We just do it right here later. Where I can be like, hey, how's everybody doing? Go over email. Slow. The way you people deserve it. <laughs> so tonight's Thursday. Well, it's Thursday night right now when I'm recording this. Tomorrow morning, let's make let's let's acknowledge it as it is. So today's Friday. <laughs> Me, Irk, Chris, Burden, Lynn and his wife are driving to San Francisco to see Brian Regan. <laughs> At Cobbs, and then I'm opening up for uh, Jim Gaffigan for two nights. So we're going to make a road trip. We rented like a little minivan. Uh, it's going to be fun, fun stuff. So there we go. So this is the uh, show with uh, our guest is Graham Elwood. And uh, it's all good. I did the Jeff Ross show tonight. The Burn and uh, probably the most fun I've ever had doing a TV taping. I hope that show works because they let us be loose and it was fun. And all righty, you keep you're all you're okay. Okay. Um, you know, life's like a bridge over troubled water. It really is. I mean, isn't isn't that what everything's about? <laughs> Maybe that's the way we'll end the show today. Alrighty, everybody. And by the way, can I help you out a little bit? I know it's Friday and you're... I know this seems weird, but don't buy that thing you're thinking about buying. You don't need it. If you really want to get it. But I'm saying, you know who I'm talking. I'm talking to the person that goes, what do I need that for? Don't just keep buying shit. Put money away. You don't need it. I just made your day easier if you agree with me. Hey, what am I... Stop buying crap. Well, I probably just caused a fight between a couple. Todd said not to buy it. He doesn't know who he's talking to. He talks to a recorder. Uh, hello? 
Hello? Uh, I know who I'm talking to. Believe me. I know what you're thinking about buying, and you don't fucking need it. What if somebody misunderstands me and they're going in to buy their medicine? They go, Todd's right. I don't need my medicine. You know, you that's not who I'm talking to. You. Ho- Hello? I'm talking to you. All right. All right. Everybody, thank you. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I'm gonna, I can't wait to do the opening this way from now on. I mean, this is just a sample of the dynamic stuff you're about to get. <laughs> uh, this is probably too long. All righty. That's right. All right. Enjoy the show, everybody. Next week's going to be better. <laughs> so sick of this shit. People should know what happens right before we go on the air. What if it was this much tension right before we went on the air? Graham, are you ready? Graham. Yeah, well, I think. Well, how about you fucking know you're ready? I don't know. My, my hand hurts. <laughs> I want you to act angry. Every bit we do already. <laughs> All right. Okay, go. Okay, go. A very funny guy, Todd Glass. If you fucking call me back this time, then don't call me ever again. Poor. The Todd Glass Show launches August 12th. Todd, hey, it's Zach. Mm-hmm. No, Zach. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, I really want to come on the, the podcast. I've got stuff to promote. Comedy Central presents Hello. Todd Glass. Hello? Todd Glass. Hello? Ryan Regan. Brian Regan, Brian Regan, Brian Regan. Brian Regan. Do you want me to do podcast? Just, I don't know. Let me know that. Do you want me to beg? God, it's Aaron. Mark, I'm the guy who can't come on the Todd Glass show. It's what exciting. I Every do? week I get excited. Uh, it's very funny podcast, the Todd Glass show. This is the real deal. Nerdist.com. This was other Todd shit. Glass. From the beautiful Las Cienegas Street. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, it's off Black Horse Motors. Todd Glass Show. There was an old farmer who lived on. Did you write this, Graham? He sat in the meadow. No, you didn't write this. No, you swear to God. No. Hold on, listen to more. In the water, their hands on their marbles and playthings. See what they're doing? Listen. Came a young lady. She looked like a pretty young creature. She sat on the grass. She pulled up her dress and she showed them her ruffles and laces and white fluffy duck. She said she oh, was that learning out. a new All righty, everybody. Her children, so here we are. I feel like we've been away a while because last week, hi, how's everybody? we got a lot of people here today. We'll introduce everybody later. Um, Darren's over there. Everybody's here. Um, if you uh, and Graham Elwood is our guest Hello, today. Hello, everybody. Oh, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you I'm talking like that. I'm sitting on the grass and I lift it. No, I didn't write that song. That's just how I talk. I thought you were. That's, that's probably why. Hickory you... diggory dog. The mouse ran off my shoes. They were yellow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Do one more. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. We're all good. I'm gonna ju- let me rip through some stuff. Burn it, burn it. Here we go. We're gonna do it quickly. Um, someone does an impersonation of me. Can you? Can you? Uh, do you have that up there? In the beginning of the show, I think they get pretty close. It sounds like me, like when I come on the beginning and I go, "Hey, it's Todd." Only this is somebody else doing it. It's okay. Hey, it's Todd. How are you? That's how I sound a little bit. Is everything all right? Hey, it's Todd. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? What's wrong? I fade that out. Who was that? Do you know his name? Chris Madison. That doesn't sound like you at all. Well, in the opening of the show, I do. I go, hey, it's Todd. Like when I'm introducing the show every week. Please. The more you comment, the longer it's going to take to give you 100%. Don't look at me then. (laughs) I like to look at you. Um, Wait a second. Edit that out. Um, uh, if I did not, uh, okay, here's, we've been here for a year. We finally got a printer. So now I have a system down. If you emailed me and I didn't respond to your email and it needed a response, uh, re-email me. And I would bet max there's maybe 10 people, uh, through 
through printing it out. And then uh, the way I got my emails back before this printer that was here, I don't even want to tell anybody. But it involved calling Atlanta, having my friend Dana fax them to me. Then that's the, I, to George Carlin. So now we have a printer here in the studio. We print it right out, and there it is, right there. So I'm not. So if I didn't respond to you, <laughs> you think you know that's true, don't you? That's why I'm laughing because yeah. I know you phone in your tweets. Uh, not I a, know that, that not happens. anymore. Oh. I used to Darren. I uh, know. I know. Darren is the. Uh, what would you say? I was going to say owns e-comic branding or started e-comic branding, which is an uh, uh, an online. But what do you call? I don't know what you call. It's like a marketing company. Marketing company. A lot of a uh, lot of. Uh, social media. You turned me on to them. The reason right. why is because you were so you're, everything was so slick. Like, I didn't know Todd was that computer savvy. You did comedy film nerds last summer and you're like, oh, Graham, I phoned my tweets and I'm like, this company must be a bunch of geniuses <laughs> if they can make you who yeah. like fax a carrier pigeon to the Pony Express, if you can make that look like yeah, well, slick. I, I, I tweet myself now, but in the beginning I said to Darren, I'm like, Darren, what, what, go ahead. No, no, no. I hope I didn't say that. Did. Well, then I'm embarrassed that I said that because you know what? But, but let me put in this because I always make fun of people that when tweeting comes along, they make fun of it. When podcasting come along, they make fun of it. I never doubted how uh, social media was great or emailing was great. I didn't use it, but I didn't go, oh, why would anybody want it? It was just for me. But now I couldn't live without it, and I like it. So anyway, hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna, I want to get to Graham so quick. We, um, Mark... Hinkley. Is that his name? I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Mark Hinkley? Yeah. That was a very nice email. We camped, We were going to camp, and then we ended up sleeping over my house last week, like eight of us. Graham, it was everything I thought it would be. We were giggling till four <laughs> in the morning. When everybody went to bed and Katie shut off all the equipment, I had my phone, and me and Blake Wexler were up, and... It, 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 people will hear the show, and, and uh, Tommy Chung stopped by and was just... It was... It was I, I, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, and then um, this weekend, I'm going to San Francisco to open up. Friday, we're going in early to see Brian Regan. We're making a road trip out of it. And uh, sometimes my trips, they start out big and grandiose. This one, RV. We're renting an RV. We're going to go up there. We're going to see Brian Regan. Then I'm going to go open up for Jim Gaffigan. Then we're going to take the RV down to Reno. Make, now we have, a, 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 to George Carlin, a minivan. And we're staying in hotels. But you know what? It's going to be just as fun. So um, thank you, Mark Hinkley. That was a really cool email. Okay, so we got that. Uh, Irk gave me a bottle of Jack and a one-year anniversary card. And you know what? It was really cool. It was really kind. I said sweet when we were off the air, but then I toughened it up for the air. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, Stacy, uh, we had a thing last week. They don't. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into. Well, yeah, you know what? Because this is before the show starts, but I don't want to get into the whole story. Some people say, "Oh, you went on too long about the hotel ta uh, blankets." <laughs> Graham, <laughs> uh, either our listeners right now are like, "Oh God," or someone that's had it already right now. They're like, "I'm done." I, uh, if he fucking talks about those hotel blankets, and I like him, I'm not. I'm fucking not listening to the show anymore. Well, turn it off, motherfucker. I know. I'm going to make it quick. You're going to be proud of me. If you're like, can you at least give them the readers the, the quick version here? To, uh, you're going to be proud of me. <laughs> it, at the hotel, you know the blanket covers that a lot of places don't use anymore? They right. found years ago were dirty. Yeah, yeah. But you took that off, and underneath it was clean, but you had to accept that those covers were dirty. Right. So you took them off, you threw them in the closet. I found out, not that the Crown Plaza is the fanciest hotel in the world, but it's not a Super 8. Um, when they, you take that off, that's not clean. You know, they clean those once yeah, every yeah. six months. Underneath, the blankets are reused. Are you okay with that or not? What do you mean? Not in a duvet. A duvet, I get it. Stuff can get through it. But at least what touches your face is Cloroxed and wash. They take the blankets that are used under the cover. Forget about it. The blanket that you pull up around you, they're reused. They don't wash them. The Crown Plaza. And, they, and they're, are you... All right with that? I, you know, to me, I just sort of go into a hotel room. You're like most people that I ask. Except I'm just, I just, I don't, because, <clears throat> you know, I, I know someone that's, that, that, like, is an EMT, and they're just like, if you knew the germs of, you know, everything, they're just so, like, like, people in the medical profession are like, Ugh, hotels and casinos and all the places we work, <sighs> oh, airports, and air right. they're just, I'm just like, I so I don't want to know. All I right. Just, all right. Well, Stacy wrote us a letter that says, no, it's it's uh, you know what the whole world is pigs. And I'm done talking <laughs> yeah, about it. It's a filthy okay, world. so we'll, so we'll move past that. <laughs> I'll get some. Uh, Chris Miller, we're going to get to your uh, thing. You wrote a very nice email, and we're going to. I didn't get a chance to read it. 
before the show. So we're going to do that next week. I'm getting organized here. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, the, some people sent some artwork in. I am almost mortified. And Graham, we're right over in a second. Um, Colin Denny, is that his name? I'm mortified that we have not acknowledged his artwork that was on, and it's my fault, on our Facebook page. What, is that what it's called? Yeah. I just never went over there to look at stuff. I looked at it today, and we printed it all out, and it's all on the wall behind us. N- no bullshit. When you see someone that does that, th- that takes the time and sends you artwork, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So we have everything you did. We print it out now that we have a printer. We, have, we, have, we printed all your stuff out behind us, okay? Ne- uh, someone did me saying hamburger, Piper, Tilly. T- well, how do you say that? Tilney. Tilney? Yeah. T-I-L-N-E-Y. Your hamburger thing. I'm at the Nut Street Comedy Club this uh, the seventh and eighth of um, September. September. Nut Street Comedy Room, excuse me. I've only heard good things about it in Wilmington, North Carolina. I hope I said it right. Someone sent me that thing that says Todd Father over there. John, I want to say everybody's name right. Who is that? F I F E I S T. So thank you very much. That was nice. This guy says, oh, he says, what do you have to do, Peter? What's his last name? <laughs> Peter Baker? He says, what do I have to do to ba- get married? Baker's probably pretty difficult to pronounce. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> Peter Baker. What I do is I... Sh- can, so, by the way, I'm glad you said that, Graham, because people are like, what's his problem? I circle everything in Magic Marker. The problem is I circle the name, too, and then I can't read it. But he remembers. Chris has, like, a memory. He goes, I go, Chris, remember about six months ago we got an email from someone that wanted to send us free tape? He goes, oh, yeah, it was uh, Bob, you know, Biederman. I'm like, how do you remember? He goes, <laughs> Anyway... I don't know. So uh, Peter, Peter, what's his last name? Raker? Uh, Baker. Baker. Peter Baker. <laughs> oh, it's well, it says Raker over there. What's that say over there? All right, it doesn't matter. Peter, he goes, what do, we have, what do I have to do to get mentioned on the show? So his name's Peter Baker. Everybody do that thing where we talk about Peter Baker. Oh, over, Peter Baker. Oh, Peter yeah. Baker. He's oh, the Peter best. Baker. Do you know is Peter he, Baker? He's the best Peter, Peter Baker I've ever he seen. He is great. Peter Baker's a good he's guy. He's better than Peter Raker. Peter Raker's yeah. kind, of, kind of a Please, no of sound a, effects. I'm kidding. I love him. Um, I want to look cool in front of Graham. What is this, a morning show? <laughs> Dropping the helicopter noise. All right, so listen. So we got through all that. If you sent me an email, remember, resend it. I just want to have a clean head when I start the show. I like that. Yeah, clean head. Okay, so listen. Let's, we're, we're almost there. Um, you know, uh, uh, Eric, who's this? Jesus, why can't I? Eric Tunney. Eric Tunney. The idea for the, you, you did for the opening of the show with someone leaving a voicemail, I really like the idea. I can't get any of my friends to do it, but I didn't want you to think I forgot about you. I hope you're, I know wherever you're housing right now, know that I read it, I tried, and I, I don't, I, I, there's nothing more I could do, Eric. Please, please, Eric. Okay, so there's that. Um, this one, what's this name here? Shoot, I didn't mean to hit my mic. God, I... Shake going you through this part of the show. You drank a five-hour energy drink. You slammed it right. It's, no, it's seven half, o'clock at night. I had half of it. Oh, okay. So two and a half hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's all the show takes. I do two and a half hours in one hour. <laughs> Ian Atlas. Ian Atlas said, um, "You're going to know why I read this one. You're damn right. I'm going to read this one." Um, he goes, "I've never seen a comic who cares more about delivering uh, his audience a first-class experience than Todd Glass." And you know what? I'm going to take that. I appreciate it, and I think it's kind that you noticed it. When I was at the uh, comedy um, bar in Toronto, you know what? Yeah, there's a lot of things, and they have nothing to do with me, that I want the audience to have a good time. The music that's mm-hmm. played as they come in, and everybody was laughing at me because the room was, re- it was really hot. So a waitress goes, you know, sometimes in the winter we put tinfoil over the air vents in the restaurant area because once the show starts, nobody's in there. So I'm like, that's a great idea. So I started putting tinfoil up all over, and everyone's laughing at me. Some comedians weren't, but some were all affectionate. But, you know, they're like, look at what's he doing. It's like, then the room, I swear to you, to, to George Carlin, they're like, the sound man goes, it's getting really cool in here. And then that comedian that just said that noticed it. He's not a comedian, but thank you for noticing that, yes, I, 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 want, I went to shows before I did comedy. And it sucks to Be spend hot. your... To be boiling hot. And the, the, there's, no big, there's not big laughs. They don't have the energy to big laugh when they're all hot and sweaty. No, they don't. And you know what? If it's a one-nighter, I get it. But if you have a comedy club and you're making money, I try to be very careful and fair when I go in before I criticize. Because let me tell you, there's some clubs. I have to give them credit. They're A rooms. They get it. I admire them. But you know what? Good, I'm a, I think I'm a good comedian. But every so often, a friend will tell me, hey, Todd, 
yeah, it's time to get rid of that bit. You, you, can be un- you can be good. I think I'm good and mm-hmm. still grow. So to those clubs that don't fix their air, this is when I get angry. Fucking fix it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it making your audiences sit. Stop coming up with excuses that go, oh, well, it's, hey, fix it. You, you, maybe there's freak exceptions. But you know what? I was at a club, and again, I have to give them credit. I wouldn't want to be criticized unless someone was fair to me. This is a club. I'm not going to mention the club. They get it at so many levels. I admire them. I have admiration for them. But every time you go in there, they go, yeah, it's the heat. It's the heat. It's the heat. Okay, listen. What, what, go to the Gap. Now, I'm not going to I First, I was going to say the Gap. They're going to go, that's a company that has right. you know the money to put in 15 billion dollar air conditioning units so i didn't use it i go i was at a thrift shop today that was cool shitty little thrift shop go there and fucking find out how they do it yeah don't tell me you can't do it the only reason you can tell me that is if they said todd did you go anywhere today and it was cool and i went you know and i was a little angry with you but you're right every place i went to today was boiling hot then i go you can't do it but i went i was out today i went to other establishments yeah. well, however they do to get it cool call them with not this tone in your voice, and go, hi, I own Blah Blah Comedy Club. How is your place cool? And then fucking call that company. Or just call a fucking, call the, go right to a cooling company and say, I got this kind of a business. You know, I get 300 people in here. What do I do? That's set to a thing. and We can't lower it. And you know what? If you hear this right now, don't be the comic that someone gives good, clean advice and he fights it. Hear this if it gets into your yeah, ears that's... and go... You know what? I good, believe. Good, good luck. Good luck getting uh, certain people to uh, just admit they're wrong and just say, you know what? You're right. I fucking we should fix that, or I dropped the ball, or whatever. I got no. I got no patience for people who can't admit they're wrong on any level when they're clearly an idiot. Sometimes you can rattle people if the, if you hit it from a million angles. They can go if they hear it. They could go. I do do that. Yeah. There's there's clubs that have you got to fix the air. If you don't have money and you don't, and it's a and I get it. Then I do. But if you have the money and it means you won't make right. it. Dump no, them. I, I get I get it when this when the struggling club goes, man, I looked into it. It's seventy five hundred bucks. I don't have it. OK. I, all right. Buy some fans. Do it the best you can. I don't know. You know, whatever. no, no. I like that you're saying that because we're not crazy. And that yeah. person out there that is in that situation is going, OK, they grandma right. Todd get it. But if you're a club and you got the money, don't make people sit in the boiling baking heat and when i'm talking about how hot the the clubs i'm complaining about i'm not talking about where it gets a little stuffy but there's air moving i'm talking on a scale from one to ten a ten it's it's uncomfortable and and in the and as a businessman in the long run you're losing customers because they're gonna go yeah i went to that club but fuck man they air conditioning sucks Mm -hmm. i'm not going back there yeah and they don't realize and and it's right and people don't drink you know my friend that owns a bar said they used to go oh when it's hot people drink more he goes you know what people drink when it gets hot water yeah. No one wants those drinks that you make the most money from when it's baking hot. They don't want to start sipping sugar into their no, system. No, they don't want a thick beer. You no. know what I mean? They want ice water. Yeah. That's it. That's right. Get it right. So anyway. Fix but, it. Thank you. All right. So we're doing good. We got all that out of the way. We had fun camping. I'm going to see. <laughs> By the way, I mentioned Brian Regan 100 times a day. Anybody that goes to Cobbs and sees me walk into that theater with the guys, with, with some of the people from the show, they're going to be like, she really... He really he's is a great obsessed. guy. I haven't seen him in forever. He's a he's a really nice guy too. It's everything you think it'll be. I went to see him here in L.A. and I was like, you know, you don't know if it's going to be that one year when you go, oh, I, he did all new stuff. I liked it, but I, it was all new and just as good as the old stuff. Wow. There wasn't one bit where I went, ah, I, I like <laughs> it, but it was. It's all you. It's all as good as you know. You he's too. Just, he's just a comic. He's just the quintessential comic. Yeah. He's always been that. Um, okay, so here we go. The old song, uh, Nick, what's that name, Chris? I'm going to take you. Nick Fiction? Yeah. He wants to know what the old song was. It's called the uh, Assumption Song, right? Yeah. The Assumption Song, okay. Well, Nick, th- next time, I, now that I won't have to write it down, now that we print your emails right out, I'll uh-huh. be reading it right from the email. Anybody out there going... I get it. Come on, Todd. We love you, but you read our name wrong. I get it. It's not going to happen anymore. So just be nice. Graham Melwood is our guest. Oh, you just... You do, why would you oh, do that? You just did said I, it. I don't know. I get nervous. Uh, I get nervous. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. So here's what I want to do. Graham we, Melwood. Our, our, I don't know what to do. You need new air conditioning in this room. No, you notice how cool I have it in Yeah, there? I know. You, Todd, you're, you're obsessed with the cool air thing. Yeah. Should you tell everyone... To, explain what we have here. We're all sitting on air conditioning, portable air conditioning, blocks We're of ice. We're all in box of ice and yes. air conditioners, <laughs> and there's a personal fan blowing in each one of us that has an ice cube in front of it. <laughs> one little ice cube. <laughs> little ice cream. Yeah. Graham, I feel bad because uh, Lynn uh, has a problem with his, his studio where he does all the songs for the show. So we did one 
keep in mind, do sure. not judge us. We did one, me oh, yeah. and the guys, we did one on our own. We really, we, we rehearsed this maybe 20 minutes today. Is everything good? Yeah. So can you, can you play the background song for our intro for Graham? And can you put some reverb in our mics? Can you come over here? Can whoever's pr- pr- doing it with us, can you come over to... Hey, let's all gather around here and do it into these, into my mic. Okay. This is for you. No, no. Oh, yeah, you need... Oh, can we do it through the house? Yeah. We might have to make a quick edit here. Yeah, here we go. Hold on, hold on. It's ready to go. It's on. Okay, go ahead. Katie Levine on the ones and twos. One more time, he's filming us. Graham, 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 that's right, everybody. The Todd Glass Show. Oh, my God. I'm putting that on my YouTube channel. Oh. Do you, are you serious? We'll do it again? No, that was perfect. No, if you want me to do it again, I'll do it again. What do I care? Grab, grab, grab. Grab, 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 grab, I love how you built it up. Rory sent this in. All right, fade it out. I love the whole. We spent a lot of time rehearsing it. We oh, put a lot. <laughs> we did. We did. We go. We got to do something nice. Um, now we are about ready to go full force with Graham Elwood, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. And I want to talk about. Uh, we're gonna. We're gonna start. We're gonna pace ourselves. Let's get a clock. So I know what time is it right now. Seven forty-two. Okay, 7:42. hold on. Just bear with me. We got nothing but time. Everybody is with us. People in their houses. Nice people. Good people. Seven what? 42. 42. 43 now. 43 now. We just lost a minute. Oh, my God. (laughs) We'll never get it back. This song, we've been playing that Assumption song. So a gentleman uh, from Portland, Joe. Joe, Joe. Joe Joe what? McKenzie. Joe McKenzie. This could be one of my favorite songs. He took the Assumption song, and then he wrote me an email, and he went, Hey, did you write this? Todd Glass Show, each episode's great. It's fun to hear Todd and his guest master crafting each premise for bit after bit. Something that is clever, something that is... Now let me tell you something before we finish this. He didn't, he got, every, this guy listens to the show. Like not only did he do it, but he got every little bit we do into it. I, this is, I'm, I like this. It's funny to hear Todd do Rodney do bitches, one-liners to entertain all of you listeners and the non-listeners as well. And if you're not listening, then go straight to nerdist.com slash podcast slash the Todd Glass Show and start listening now. Swear to Carlin, more reverb will always sound slick. So put some more on it or go eat a grilled cheese by candlelight, not Chick fil A. We're hundred percenters, it's fine if you're Mark Maron's podcast. There's just before glasses, don't change that dial, just sit on your comfortable seat. Ovation. Never has anyone gotten so a good. standing ovation so in the studio. That's I think it'd right. be funny if he keeps, you know, you keep thinking he's going to say a swear word, and then at the end he just goes cunt. And but, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> That's what Henry was doing, the thing where the guy gets the wrong part wrong. Right. He goes, you know, and mm-hmm. we sat and we went in the front, and the girl walked over and I punched her in the cunt, and I <laughs> knew that he, like he always, he doesn't know where, the guy's like, no, I think you're getting it yeah, wrong. That's... He's trying to do the assumption song, but the guy can't right, do right, it, right. you know? Anyway, so there you go, um, uh, Joe. Ma- See, here's what I do. I write it phonetically. Joe McKenzie. Oh, there we go. Joe McKenzie. Joe McKenzie, you son of a bitch. Oof, Joe, right. Joe. So before we get into the funny, I am <laughs> so excited. It's a 45 minute lead up. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, we, I am, I am, It'd be so uh, great if you just do a couple more and then you go, ah, we're out of time. <laughs> Thanks for Graham Elwood being on the show. That's our podcast. Graham, 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 Graham. And then you wrap it up. No, this is something. This is. Uh, Graham, 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 um, I'm very excited about the podcast festival, and we've mentioned it, but the, the sleepover element of it, which we just had a fun at our yeah. one year anniversary, there's an element of that to this festival, well, majorly. Well, well, that's the thing. Like we, when we first designed it, we didn't want it to just be like we're like first year fest. We talked about oh maybe we should just keep it kind of small and put it in a little bar or something like that. But it's like I kind of want to make it a big event, and and because I you know you've been on the road. I've been on the road heavy the last four years and I've seen what's happened with podcasting and I've seen like when I first was on doing Never Not Funny I'd be on a guest and fans would come up to me and what the podcast fan is and that they live everywhere and I was like wouldn't it be great if we got everyone together and had a big party like a big slumber party festival just a blast and I was like so we found this nice hotel in Santa Monica that's giving a rate on rooms and, and I was like I really hope because the other thing, too, and I'm sure you guys have this, too, like all those names you read, all these super fans that know every little thing of your show, like mm-hmm. they know that with comedy film nerds, and they all talk, we have some fans in Japan and all over the place, and I'm like, I want to meet them. Mm-hmm. I want to shake their hand. I want to come up and go, thank you so much. And they, you know, they come up to you on the road, and they're like, I love your show, but if we got them all together, and we all just celebrated how much... How awesome podcasting is, first of all, how it's changed just us as performers. It's empowered us in ways we never thought were possible. Hey, let me tell you something. I'm so glad. I just said not only, and eventually we'll get used to it, not only do I like doing it, but I also still like talking about it, exactly what we're doing now. And I'm, and I'm really glad to see someone as excited as you are because I've never been as excited about doing anything stand-up, still love stand-up. Yeah. But – Really, podcasting before is... podcasting, I used to go. People go, "What do you like to do?" Because I don't camp. I don't, you know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I mean, I don't go on trips. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I do camp actually, but I go just I stand up, hanging out with my comedian friends and doing stand up. Now the podcasting and the podcasting is just taking that. It's basically taking all the things we talk about and BS with in green rooms, and you know, on, when, when you drive, you know, like all the times you and I have driven to gigs and all the way we just talk seriously and then fuck around. I mean, like our show, we've we've talked about it. You know, comics. We see a lot of movies on the road. That's what you do during the day. And we all just sit around and, hey, did you see this movie and that movie? And that's kind of how Comedy Film Nerd started. So we wanted this podcast thing to be a party because we're, if you think about it, you know, there's podcasts that have been around for seven, eight years, but it's really, we're in the very beginning. We're like rock and roll in 1950. We're like Little Richard. And that's where we are at right now. We yeah. have no idea where podcasting is. Just like in the 50s, they didn't know that. You two would be selling out arenas with these multimedia crazy laser shows and all this. They had no idea, man. They were just taking, yeah. you know, they were just taking blues and R and B and speeding it up. And and so so that's what this that's what this this, this festival is. And I just I just, like when you were sitting there going Graham 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 Graham. I just flashed on like, you know, whether. Like I hope when we're like doing our podcast, you or whoever just pops in and fucks around. Of course, you know what I mean. I just want the, I just want this like nonstop party because the fans, they love it. The thing that they love the most. And the New York Times did an article about this. They said the reason you should listen to comedians' podcasts is not for the funny, for the reality. They're getting to know exactly. Like this woman, came, I was just in Virginia Beach with with Doug Benson. A woman comes up to me and goes, "Oh my god, that you know was talking about my divorce and that I was married to a Brazilian." And I was like, "Oh," and she, and she was like. And I was like, oh, that's right. If I mention it on the show, people know it. Like, I drink coconut water on the show. I've been given coconut water by fans. You know, I get so many vegan, gluten-free, like, cookies and shit like that on the road because I always talk about that. It's the coolest yeah. thing. And I want everyone together to come for this big party. And if you're coming from out of town, this hotel, is, there's, we only have a limited block of discounted rooms. So yeah. jump and, and, on that. And also, at first, when I found out I was doing the podcast at 11 in the afternoon, at first I was thinking I want to do it at night. But then, after I did my sleepover, I went... 
I wouldn't want to switch my time slot because I want. I might say now to everyone, wear your pajamas. It's yeah. eleven o'clock. Come down out of your rooms. Come yeah. into this room. Wear your pajamas. So we are going to take a break, a quick break, not sure. where everyone scatters all over the don't room. Don't run here. around like assholes. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's funny. I wouldn't really say that, but in my head, it's like, don't fucking run yeah, around like assholes. Be a fucking mope. Sit yeah. down like a goddamn adult. And um, so, uh, so, but uh, so the name of the hotel, what, where do they go? Okay, go to LAPodFest.com and you can get uh, the schedule is up there. You can buy a festival pass. We just brought the rate down to 99 bucks. You'll get to see everything. You can do a day pass. Um, and, and Saturday night, there's also a co- stand-up comedy show. We just added Doug Loves Movies. So Doug is going to be doing his thing from 7 to 8, and then from 8 to 10 is a stand-up comedy show. And you can buy that as a single event ticket. That's the only single event ticket we're selling right now. And if you go to LAPodFest.com, you can buy it, 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 the hotel room. All the information you need is right there at LAPodFest.com. Cool. And uh, let's see, where do we go to break on here? What do you want to do? You want to do that? We could do that. It is my show. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. Just I noticed that if I get if I get ramped up too much now, this is when I have to take a deep breath, and then there's a calm show. Let's the first half an hour is like bop, 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 bop for me, and then it's like take a deep breath and make it special. I'm gonna say we're gonna do. How about we do the old? And, and, uh, before we take a break, you have to hear the beginning of this, and then we'll let it go. The old, um, war, the old video that they used to play for the for the uh, for the this one here. This says uh, whenever you have a stance and you feel some way about something, be careful because if your stance is wrong and what you're teaching people is wrong, uh, if you, if you make sure that doesn't happen and you always try to be fair, later you won't be a part of something like this. Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place to another. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. So no matter where you meet a stranger, be careful if they are too friendly. One never knows when the homosexual is about. (laughs) That's real. Let's take the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon, and he didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. Makes sense. Sure. Heartless. He'd done it a hundred times before. And he didn't think anything was unusual when the driver struck up a friendly conversation. People are nice. In fact, he seemed like a real nice guy. Sure. What yeah. Jimmy didn't know was oh. that Ralph was sick. Oh. A sickness oh. that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous <laughs> and contagious. <laughs> oh, it is contagious. Yes. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Oh. A person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. Eey. Is that what that is? So no matter where you meet a stranger... Be careful if they are too. Oh, Whew. there you go. Be careful, folks, when you're hitchhiking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, and by the way, Will Frazier, right? Yeah. Uh, emailed us. He's an engineer, and he came by. You know, I don't like wires on the tables. Mm-hmm. He came by with uh, me, Irk, Mikey, and Chris. And we drilled holes all over the table, and he dropped everything Drop and underneath. It. And it was like, what for me? It was like he may as well have a therapy degree. Every time he started dropping, like getting rid of wires and cleaning them up and labeling them, I was like, oh, it's like it was like porno for me. It was just very. <laughs> now, listen, I see you brought Libby with you. Libby, how are you? Hi, Todd. I'm fine. How are you? Libby, I need a huge favor from you. And it's very... anything you need, Todd. You know me. I'll help you out. Easy breezy. And you name it, sweetie. It's yours. I have to go. I, everybody went to the bathroom when we took a break, and I didn't. Could you? And, I, and I'm trusting you because I think you're the most reliable. Will you run the show? I'll be a few minutes while I'm gone. I don't like to talk too much, Todd. The microphones, they get close to my nose, and it makes me allergic. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, like, what type of show Libby would do if I left. Like, what would she talk what about? Libby? Now, Libby, what do you think about this? Seriously, because uh, you know, I'll go to the bathroom later. That's so we can make a bit work. Um, uh, the hotel blankets, do you think that that's disgusting? Well, yeah, I think the blankets are disgusting. I think all the hotel rooms are weird, unless it's the third floor. I got no problem with the third floor. Why the third floor? Well, it's between two and four, so I just find it better that way. Now, do you stay at hotels? or No, do you, never. You, you, you won't stay? Where do you stay when you go on the road? Like oh, you, I always have friends. Well, you, not that you go on the road, Libby. I don't know where you're going. When you visit, <laughs> she's, a, she's a traveling salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Libby's a traveling salesman. Is that what you're saying? 
<laughs> I said, yeah, what does she, what does Lib- she do? What does Libby do? Well, Libby, I would imagine, is retired. Oh, yeah. She's older and she's retired. Yeah. And she just goes to, she just visits family. I don't like to travel too much. I'll go anywhere, but I just oh, don't. Would you like to, because we're going to take a trip on the show. Would you like to go oh, with I'd us? I'd love to. Where are we going? Well, you, uh, you know what? We're going to Portland. You'll love it there. It's too the much food. rain. Oh, it's wow. a little dark. The well, people me... are weird. They all have those same glasses, like Buddy Holly wears. Why? <laughs> Bet you. <laughs> That's her version. She's sort of right. She did yeah, go she there once. Did, yeah, she went there once. Oh. It was like a little too hipster for her. They all wear the Buddy Holly. Oh, Buddy Holly. I mean, I liked him, but let's be honest, the crickets were better. Well, <laughs> okay. Listen, why don't you just mention a place you want to go? Anywhere, Todd. I'll go. Where are you on the road? Are you go to all these exciting places? Take me there. I'll go. I got it, Libby. You're gonna love it. Seattle. We're going in two months. Seattle's just a bigger Portland. Florida. Oh, Florida! Well, Florida's nice. Yeah, nice. We'll go there. All right, we got it all be... great. You know, I'm so excited now. We'll start planning the trip, and uh, it's going to be great, right? Where are we going? In Fl- where, where are we going to go? We go to Tampa. Oh, I, the Bay Side. I don't like it. The Gulf. It's weird. Then it's... you know what? Don't go to Tampa with us. We'll, you, we'll take you when we go to Fort Myers. Fort, I can't. I got an uncle who used to live there. The sand is weird. Well, I don't know where else to. Would you, can you do me a favor to make it easier? Just tell me where you like. Anywhere. I'll go with Todd. You know me. Easy breezy. Anywhere in Florida we'll go. We'll You'll, have a great time. You like Chicago? That's not in Florida, but... Uh, well, I, did, I was trying to get you out of Florida because I thought I was going to keep mentioning... I love pl- Florida. It's warm. We'll go well, there. You know what? I tell you, do you like Fort, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the another place in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> to keep the bit going? Do you know there's another town that you to keep the bit going? <laughs> I think this next thing... By the way, is everybody all right? We're all happy here. Okay, it's good. Graham's our guest. I got excited. I think I picked up the homosexual disease. I hitchhiked <laughs> over here. Oh, you did? did? Yeah. <laughs> I got well, that and uh, typhoid. <laughs> I got that. It was really weird. I got gay typhus. Well, and- what's funny, they're not saying be careful that the homosexual will rape you. You know, they're just saying be careful because you'll catch it. You'll catch homosexuality. Like the measles. Oh, the 50s. Sure. That's so the great. The it said demand. To ha- have relations. Like with demand someone. to like have demand relations. Re- that was the worst part. That and by the way, I don't want to get too much into a deep conversation because, you know, you know the way I am. But keep in mind. You have to think for the person that's listening to that right now, uh, you know, that goes, oh, can you believe it? We're do- we have to be doing something of that today. So just think of what it is before you just think twice because uh, we, we're, we're probably. We're, there's people who still think that way. Well, yeah, that's I mean, true come too. on. There's the, there's the legitimate rape. The woman's body shuts down. And uh, <laughs> there's fucking idiots who think the yeah. world is flat. No, that, that, you're right. I'm glad you were here because my comment made me seem uneducated because you're right. Yeah, there's. Uh, Look, I, it's, I'm saying it's still going on. Like, people are like, yeah, no shit. The world is flat. Global warming is a myth. And uh, women are stupid. Women are dumb because they yeah. they allow rape, but their bodies are smart and shut down the babies, so they can't have rape babies. <laughs> it's a DJ that doesn't listen. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> All righty. Someone said this in because it makes them laugh. It's like an old timey. Where's the get right? We're going to get right back to where you want if that if we do that again, we'll play that. That's what that'll stand for. OK, um, this they, uh, Alan Ladd. I only know that name because Fred Willard in Waiting for Guffman said something about. Mm. So but play this clip because it'll it'll I think it'll inspire us to do something funny. Um, do you have it? Shut up, Dan. Did she give you any gum? Forget the whole thing. I'm going blind, that's all. No, you're not. Shut up and forget the whole thing. Come on, Johnny. She gave you the gum, didn't she? Didn't she? No. That's real. That's Unless I'm missing something, that's just, you know, who, who sent that in? Jeff? Uh, had, I knew a name. Hey, good for you. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the way they acted back then. Yeah. Like, give me some crackle. No, you could, we'll take a break. Put your phone away. I'm already gone by my mind. If you knew the shit that was rattling around in my head, that when the phone and this and that and the whole thing, uh, could you play some crackling music in the background? So this is the way acting, like it was like, if we were in a, like it was like the, yeah. Do, hold on, I'll, I'll try to set you up here. I'm telling you, you better stay away from my, well, give me an old timey name. What would I call you? Um, <laughs> what did the, what, Montgomery. Montgomery, I'm telling you right now, you you better stay away from my girlfriend. 
You better stay far away from her. Look, Fitzy, a man has a right to walk down the street one foot at a time like any other Joe. Is this how people... Was the acting the, bad or did people really that's talk? That's how they talk. I don't know. That, I've always asked that question. They always go, yeah, you'll get them, see? Like, did they... Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Something's fishy here right now, and I'm going to tell you one more time. This... Look, look, Mac, you can take your fishing pole in any part of town. You're so pleased, but I'm going to walk down this street, and I'm going to walk high and mighty. You're going to watch where you walk, because I'll tell you one day, you're going to walk right into some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, not that. No, you're play walking the, into the Beverly Hillbillies? Play the, <laughs> play the bump, bump. Okay. okay. One day, yeah, you think everything's all right? You think you, you think you know everything? One day, let me tell you something. You're going to walk yourself right into some trouble. Wait, maybe that, that wasn't a good one. Yowza! <laughs> no, let me, let me try it again. I think that music is more like this. That's funny. Because she never wore that perfume back in Florida. I could do that bit for an hour. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Johnny? Johnny? Did they, they used to say Johnny oh, like Johnny, that. Listen, yeah. Johnny. Johnny? Listen, Johnny. <laughs> all, right. all right, there you go. <laughs> Listen, Johnny. All right, guess what? Thank God we have this uh, thing right here. With the oh, thank God for that. Everything's good. Mm, I feel better. Smooth and easy. You know, um, I have an idea. What do you think of this? I, I don't know why. I, 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 I think you, you might have an opinion on this. Well, you have an opinion on a lot of things, so I figure you have an opinion on this. <laughs> um, you, you know, you go up to Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Boulevard. It's like New York a little bit. Like, I shouldn't say it's like New York. You, you, you drink, there's people. There's bars. And I always yeah. think. So I, I always thought, like, well, why can't there? Like, why won't I cab it in L.A.? Because when you get up there. My, my headset sounds different. Do we change something? Do we install a new board while I was talking? <laughs> um, because once you're up there, you can get a cab to your house, and you don't mind because you're sitting in your house. If they go, that'll be 10 minutes. You're like, eh, and then you take. But at the end of the night, this is a weird thing I'm bringing up, but this is the way my mind works. If I had, like, Bill Gates money, you mm-hmm. know, or mo- mm-hmm. where I could go, I want to try something, I think I'd make my money back. It wouldn't take a month. You'd have to do this till people figured out, yeah, you can get cabs up there. Put 75 cabs, 100, whatever someone told you, would, would, and, and for, for six months, would it end up the person that invested into all those cabs? Now, you need money because it wouldn't happen overnight because you, you do it, you put 100 up there, and you'd be like, no one's getting a cab because no one goes up there thinking there's cabs. Once people saw that one month would pass by, two months would pass by, three months, they'd be like, yeah, there is cab- I don't know what, no one would know all this work went into it. There'd be a campaign, and people would be like, oh, yeah, there's cabs fucking roaming up there all the time in L.A. that people would start taking cabs, and someone could invest in cabs and see their money return. Well, Does that make it, sense at all? Yeah, I think there are some. I mean, Th- That's my point. Some, but not like New York, where no, 80% no, no. of the time... Well, that's because of the, the, you know this is a car culture. Everybody has a car in L.A. But do you think if people saw there were cabs there... That- I think that's starting to happen, actually, because one of the things L.A. has been trying to do, and this has been sort of... Uh, the, the red line subway has been a little bit of a foundation for this, is building... You're seeing by a lot of the subway stops, apartment complexes has gone, are, have gone up and stuff like that, and they're putting little shopping areas Mm -hmm. la has realized that it's trying to actually go up instead of out and one of the ways to do that is to have good public transportation and i think there are some people who are you know because la is a big transplant city who are moving here from new york and chicago and stuff like that where you don't necessarily need to have a car and i think some people they'll they'll, they might they might still have their car but i think they, they would start to go you know what we just cab it you know what i mean why if we're just gonna hang out in hollywood tonight why don't we cab it because driving's a pain in the ass and parking and all this other nonsense i think i think it could work because i've tried there's a there's like a place called bloom right near my house it's like a little restaurant mm-hmm. and it's like literally like a city block maybe a city block and a half sometimes when i have friends over my house i'm like let's walk let's walk and they're yeah. like if one person says eh, i go okay it's like I, I, I think it's a good idea but then i think well i'd be eating sooner if i drove but I like the idea of walking. It when is... I moved to Santa Monica, which I live by the beach, and there's, there's a, you walk a lot. There's a lot to stuff to just I, – I love the walking aspect now, and I use my car so much less. I'll walk to places. I ride my bike. I, I even take the bus, the Santa Monica bus around sometimes. Are you embarrassed the type of car you have? Can I tell people what you have? What kind of car? Because I know you're environmentalist, and I hope this – I'll edit it out. He has a, you have a stretch Hummer, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, and it, we we burn we burn uh, baby harp seal skin. <laughs> That's what it runs. What is that bad? We shouldn't do that. Is that the, you know, and we and and, it, and we just throw blood diamonds out the window. That's how we. I always think it's funny when people get out of a stretch home or somewhere. You're like, oh, they think they look good. God, you're such an idiot. Yeah, it doesn't you, look cool. You look so dumb. Yeah. Like when you do that, yeah, you, you just. But anyway, back to uh, Santa Monica. It is nice. In the, where do you live now? Do you live down there still? Yeah, I live down in Santa Monica. I've lived there for eight years, and I love it. Like tonight, a buddy of mine's band is playing on Main Street near me. I'm gonna walk down there and see it. And What's the name of their band? The world record. Cool. Uh, he actually did the sound. I've known him since college. He did the soundtrack for my documentary, in Afghanistan. I was coming home from Santa Monica. I think I told somebody here this story and uh, pulled up to an intersection. And uh, I, w- I was driving towards an intersection and I saw some cars were beeping at somebody, like beeping, beeping, beeping. So, of course, you look what's going on. You know, who's, who's not going it when the light turned green? And I saw a woman in the front seat dead asleep. So. I, here, at first I thought was Todd do you need to get involved like don't just be you know if you just, and I thought yeah because I thought drunk first thing I thought was drunk and I thought yeah you know what I've done that where I've seen somebody questionable and I, you drive home and you go you know you eventually forget about it which you shouldn't be proud of but for the first 10 minutes you're like if that person plowed into somebody and I could have prevented it it's... so I did a U-turn pulled up next to her and there she I, I thought maybe when I got up to her or I banged on her window like I didn't want to rattle her because obviously the car was not moving it wasn't in park it was probably just whatever the reason is maybe she still had her foot on her brake maybe it's a car that doesn't idle that high where if you don't press the gas it did stay there but I thought if I opened the door that I might rattle her but I thought I got to do something now she was dead asleep I opened the door dead asleep then I think, I got to reach in there, put it in park real quick. I do. I put it in park, dead asleep. So then I, boom, pull the keys out. And then a guy walking down the street goes, hey, I saw her there. I didn't know what to do. I just panicked. I, didn't, I called the police. He was just like two seconds ago. So then she wakes up, and she opens up her door. She goes, where are my keys? And I'm like, at this point, you know what? I understand now what my cop, I have a few cop friends go through, why they need so much training. Because you know the right thing to do is to arrest them. But you also know you're about to ruin this person's life. Yes, you're, you're intelligent enough mm-hmm. to go, yeah, they were about to kill somebody. But yet you, and I thought, ah, oh, I said to her, I go, listen. She goes, I'm not drunk. I just fell asleep. Now, I've done that, and there is a difference, but you're still dangerous. But once you wake up and you get the living shit scared out of you, she could, if she was just tired, she probably could have made it home three blocks. You know, that adrenaline. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, and I said to her, I, go, I, I, I did feel bad. I wasn't being like trying to play, you know, Joe Cop or anything. I was like very, I felt bad, and I went, I said, I, if, if you're not drunk, the cops are going to be here in a second. I can't give you your keys. If you're not drunk, then they're not going to arrest you for just falling asleep. They won't. They're going to tell you to pull your car over. And she went, I promise you, I'm not drunk. I know it's ridiculous, but I just fell asleep. And I've done that. Mm-hmm. And I just said, ugh. And I was like, I gave her her keys. And I know that probably. What do you think? Was that? I don't know, man. I mean, that's, we're, we're not cops. You know, that's well, not, I mean, I could have just kept the keys until the yeah, cops got Yeah, but that's also there. not your job. I mean, you know. I but mean, if, if she was sloppy drunk, then you would have. If sloppy drunk, then you go, oh, yeah, okay. You're f- I know you're not. We'll just let the cops sort it out because I, right. I don't argue with drunks. You know what I mean? Like all the years in comedy clubs. <laughs> they say the same thing over and over. And I go, oh, I know. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's yeah. funny you say that because, again, I always say my cop friends. I have two cop friends. They said the same thing. They go, it took me five years on the force not to argue with drunk people. I always thought I could get through to no, them. No, no. They yeah. have a chemical in their body. They drunk say the same. The nicest. I just started doing a bit of my. The nicest person in the world is an asshole, is an annoying idiot when they're drunk. I don't care who you are. If the Pope or the Dalai Lama were hammered, they would be fucking annoying. Well, I hope you agree with me. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a goddamn feud right now, Graham. <laughs> I try to make the show like more. Um, I do think it sounds. Oh, God. I, my new favorite word is cliche, you know, but I, I think I misuse it a lot. But don't sure. worry. I have a jingle being made for it, everybody. <laughs> and that's the truth. Um, Todd Glass. He'll you misuse the word. It's coming in. I, we, we ordered it from a... I found a new jingle company. Oh. I still got Lynn. Is this jingle lama? Uh, you, is it, is every, is, you make fun of my jingles? You make fun of me. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, Oh, what was I going to say about cliche? Uh, the cops. Oh, no. Come on now. You think that's what I sound like? Oh my God, I don't sound like that I'm at all. I'm folding my arms because I'm stupid. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing what? No, seriously, Graham, stop that. No, I hurt my voice. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I bit my tongue, Ted. Stop making me. <laughs> all right, so listen. We got. We, let me just go through what we have here. It's all good. You 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 like filthy blankets with shit on them. Okay. <laughs> Like oh by the way you're by the way you Chelsea Peretti uh, Daniel everybody n- likes filthy I like yeah, they, they're all writing it off too you have to have I germs. like syphilis blankets like it worked, si- okay, it so lo- like, worked when we took over this country you like syphilis <laughs> blankets you think my cab idea is already happening that I agree with probably yeah. Alan Ladd eh, to erase that um, so what were we talking about being though the drunk person you're not a cop yeah trying to argue with drunks I don't know nah who cares right yeah yeah um listen. I got, uh, want to hear something? I don't know why. I love. It's just, it, it's, a, it's an old commercial. It says, it's like, it's, it's, you, it, you know, well, I, I don't have to set up. Play that old co- commercial. You know, this was me five years ago, and it's still me. Because I confess I'm a waistline watcher from way back. Oh. <laughs> well, that's enough for today. Now for a lively lift. She was cleaning. Ice cold Coca-Cola. There's no waistline worry with Coke, you know. Actually, this individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> what? What <laughs> grapefruit and oh, what? Co- oh. Stop it right there. Because, first of all, the woman in the ad is very, very, like, her waist is like a joke, like Wilma sure, Flintstones. Sure. And she's obviously, she was folding stuff. Well, that's enough of that for the day. I've been busy cleaning away homosexual germs. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this is the rest of it. But I love. Oh, by the way, it's it's them trying to tell a woman it's the same as a grapefruit, and you yeah. like grapefruit, so why not have a coke? Even dumb women believe coke is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Mm, another thing, the cold, crisp taste of coke is so satisfying it keeps me from eating something else that might really add those pounds. <laughs> like a legitimate meal. Both <laughs> from blending or pure food flavors. I guess that's why everyone likes the refreshing new feeling you get only from not too sweet Coca Cola. And no wonder. Lively, lifty Coca-Cola provides a welcome bit of quick energy between meals. Thanks for a pleasant pause in a busy day. Oh, and remember, Coke is low in calories, too. Say, now, don't you get any thinner? I don't even know what, what that is. Don't get any thinner? Does that make any sense? Don't you get any thinner? Yeah. They would think they'd want you to get thinner in, in, no. the, in the sick ad. What? I don't, I don't know. But I love it. I love Jesus. those old ads. They're, they're just, it's just the, the, the uh, play the one for the, uh, the cigarette ad from the doctors. This is just. You know, if you were to follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls, you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Mm-hmm. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just Pause long it. enough to enjoy a cigarette. Pause it. I th- and because they I think you should know that for some reason, me and Graham, I do the same thing you do when I hear these ads, but now people will exactly know what we're doing. We may pretend we agree with everything yeah, that's yeah. being said. Like oh, We're like, oh, we're sure. Like, we're taking it all in. Like with the sure. Fa- oh, oh like, that's, of course. Of course. The doctors have delicious cigarettes between patients. <laughs> <laughs> Then please tell me they didn't say you're exaggerating. Well, it's hard to exaggerate that ad, but they they say delicious. No, but there are cigarette ads that say delicious. Oh, yeah, from the fifties. <laughs> of course, doctors. Like we don't, we don't, we don't um, uh, question anything. No, we we're hear. so dumb. Yeah, we're, we're just, like, oh, like sh- we tell our kids to be quiet because we want to hear what doctors well, do. It's time to have a delicious cigarette and a and a, and a Coca Cola yeah. to help my grapefruit cravings. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want my waist to get thin, too thin, right, ladies? <laughs> Can't hold an apron without a thin waist. Who's going to push the vacuum if your waist is too thin? <laughs> Don't want to be so thin that your husband can't get his masculine, smarter-than-you hands around your waist. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the thing where I think – I don't know. I said I should call this podcast. I think I've talked about this before. I think that women, when they used to get crank phone calls, that it was men depicting women like that back then. I don't think women were really victimized. Like when someone would call and go, oh, they would go, who is this? Just tell me who this is. Like that's the way they were in movies. But right. I think in real life, even in 19 – whenever phones existed and someone called and said something disgusting, oh, any intelligent woman, click – they well, though they might be like, what if he's a grapefruit salesman? <laughs> All right, play the, play the, play what, the. I'm single. Is he? Are you single? I need to be married. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? What's your name? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? I'm Libby. I'm wearing a house coat and mismatching slippers. Oh, wait, this guy calls Libby. Oh yeah, Libby's getting crank called. Libby's getting crank called. Hello. Hi. What's your name? My name's Libby. Who's this? What are you wearing? 
Oh, just a house coat and slippers. I lost the left one doesn't match the right, but the right one is comfortable. It's actually better, if you know what I mean, because I have a weird bunion on my left foot, so the left one fits it better. It just kind of works. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to call. You be Libby. You be Libby. But she goes off. I mean, t- trust me, she goes on so long. But you would think the guy on the other end, he's, he's, he stays around. He lets her talk. Okay? Okay, give me a... Uh, by the way, whenever I do any phone bit, I don't care if it makes sense. I like phone sound effects. It makes it work. It doesn't matter. You go, well, wait, who's calling who? Just play something. There we go. Carlisle 35000. <laughs> Hello? Hey, how you doing? Dude? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right there. Yeah, I had a little bit of a weird... St- I think my pillow got bundled up. It what hurt you, my neck a little bit. What are you wearing? Well, I have... Right now, I have... Well, I'm my polyester slacks, I'm just going to steam them a little bit so that they don't... Sometimes they get a little wrinkly, and when I wear them, it rubs against my right knee. My knee... It hasn't been the same in years. But I... <laughs> I still like they just the slacks. They look good on my figure, and I it's time to get out of the house coat. It's after ten thirty. Uh, <laughs> he just hangs up. He just hangs up. <laughs> she talks so long. She talks so long. Hold on, I don't. I got to get a new phone thing, Libby. All right. Well, here's hello. We have to go to the tra- Oh, you know who's on the phone? Oh. Who's calling? Hello, this is Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, yeah, this is Jerry Seinfeld. Are you in the witness protection program, Jerry Seinfeld? <laughs> Thank you. This is not, Jer- there's no way this is Jerry Seinfeld. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it's okay. ridiculous. Okay. Let's just find out. It, 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 this is not Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, this is Jerry Seinfeld. I'm calling in. I'm just wondering, I love the show. I love what you guys do. It's Jerry Seinfeld. No, Jerry, you sound like a black guy that's in witness protection program. No, it's Jerry Seinfeld. What do I have to do to prove it? Uh, not talking in that weird voice. I mean, you don't sound like... Yeah, I don't... I gotta be honest. Go around the room, because if it's Jerry Seinfeld, I feel like I'm gonna feel like an idiot. Does this sound to anybody in the room like it's Jerry Seinfeld? I... I gotta say no. I mean, there's some little things that kind of sound like Jerry Seinfeld. No, it, it's Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld. Hold on, it's Jerry Seinfeld. I swear to God. Uh, I just love the show, and I wanted to call in. I love all the characters. I love Libby. I love the bit when the guy calls in as Jerry Seinfeld with the <laughs> devil voice. Hold on a second. That's the bit we're doing. I know. I love it. I don't know. It doesn't sound like Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know. It could be. Do you know what? Hey, I have an idea. What are we going to do? Do you know any questions? Because if it's Jerry Seinfeld, I'm, I, okay, I just. Okay, I got a question. Is, is there a question we could ask him? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so Jerry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy uh, delicious cigarettes? Oh, I've never smoked a cigarette the day in my life. Oh, it's, it's Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, he doesn't smoke. He Jerry doesn't smoke. Seinfeld. That's it. That's Jerry it. Seinfeld. Yeah. Jerry. 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 Oh, it is Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Is that his ringtone? Yeah, I told you it was Jerry Seinfeld. All right. Here's... Jerry Seinfeld would call in and play that music so you can verify. It <laughs> it's Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> do, you, do you know that guy? No. Hamburger. He, it's his catchphrase. He tells jokes. Do we find out his name yet? It's disrespectful. I want to learn his name. But his catchphrase is Hamburger. <laughs> Oh, good catch. And he tells a joke. Like, he'll be like, uh, what, do I have any jokes here that I could? I don't know if I have a joke joke. Nah, I don't. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like he, go, like he might say, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a bad joke. I've been, I'm meaning to, I've been meaning to take it, uh, some herbs that improve my memory, but I can't remember what the herb's called. Hamburger. I was thinking of making mine like we talked about last week, chicken salad. Sure. Chick. salad. Oh, that's a gold. You think? No, are you serious? I think it's great. Yeah, it's still Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Graham, I saw, uh, I love your podcast. Oh, thank you. What's your favorite part about it? Oh, when you do all the things that are funny. Oh, see, it's. Now it's him. 
It's Where would that music come from, Graham? You're right. Think. You're right. Think. It would come from Jerry Seinfeld. Right. right. <laughs> Think, <laughs> Graham. <laughs> Think it through. We're going to do a radio DJ thing here in a second. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The X hose. You want to play that? I love these. You know what? You're right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. All right. Enough of that. Um, <laughs> what do I got? Uh, oh, Daniel's not here. I guess in honor of Daniel. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. It fucking sucks. Turn it off. Oh, kids are so cute. No. I, how about, like, by the way, that is cute, if you must know. Mm-hmm. But when, when, when people have their kids do commercials, local commercials, it's not cute. You're, yeah, I know. I hate that when they're just like, and the kid sings the cute song. Right, right. You yeah. can get the best deal in town. Yeah. Grady's four. Get a professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love these ads. This is an ad for a new hose. Tired of tugging and lugging your hose? It's heavy. It tangles, as everyone knows. You uh, need but, the X hose. Of course, they show someone tangling their hose and yeah. they fall over and their blood drips out of their yeah. head and the f- kids watch their mom die in front of everybody. Because that's what happens if you have an old hose. You oh. know, they always have the recreation yeah, yeah. so over the top. Tired of old-fashioned hoses. And then the woman pulls it or the guy and then she falls over and then, and then she can't get help and she lays there and the kids don't know who to call and, and then the, and they can't get an ambulance and then she starts rotting and the Maggots eater, and then they because not if they got an X hose. Oh, <laughs> maggots eater. So play it from the beginning. Yeah. I could listen to the beginning every time. They just know right from the beginning. They don't waste any time with tone and voice. They're selling this fucking hose. Tired of tugging and lugging your hose? It's heavy. It oh. tangles, as everyone knows. You need the X hose, the incredible expanding hose. Huh? Watch this. Turn the water on, and the X hose automatically expands up to three times its length. Turn the water off, and as the water drains, the oh. X hose automatically contracts back in just seconds. What? Amazing. What? Shut the fuck up. Water so makes things heavy. change the size? Hose is in- <laughs> this is fucking crazy. This is voodoo. This Incredibly is- light. A 50-foot X hose weighs only about one pound. A dream to handle. Just turn the water on, and the X hose quickly expands up to three times its length as you effortlessly guide it to where you need now to shut go. Shut it off. Spray away homosexuals. <laughs> and when you're finished, the X hose will automatically follow you back and contract for easy wait, storage. Wait, it follows <laughs> you back? What's it? Has Having a... problems doing math homework? The X hose will solve them for you. <laughs> the put, put that, put the that background in commercial music from two on. Se- People just going off on the exos like it's things it could never do. Like it's so full of shit. The exos is great. I have hold on. You have that. You have that. I know you said you wanted to get it ready. I love the exos. Oh. My kids had trouble with their math, but wait, I'm stealing your joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me and my wife, our sexual activity around. I can't think of good ones. I'm getting. You know. We've always been wondering who really was in the grassy knoll, but the Exos has a time machine, so we went back there and solved the Kennedy assassination. The Exos is great, and you know what? We sold our car, and now we just use the Exos. Mm-hmm. What? How do you make get around with if that doesn't make... Oh, shut I'm tired of doing that bit. Yeah, too great about... Hi. I'm Todd Glass, CEO of the Double Tree. Our blankets are clean still. And for you people that don't like disgusting, dirty blankets, we still... All right, we're out of that. That sounds like a what? The, the voiceover of like some... That's David Feldman if he was doing an ad. Hi, I'm David <laughs> Feldman. No, I'm David Feldman. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to take a quick break, but we're not going anywhere. And uh, then we're going to... We're going in for the descent. Today's a, today's a shorter show nice. than usual. bang, bang. Um, only because we all have things to do. No, I, I got nothing to do. After you guys leave, I sit around here and cry. I actually have to do a phone con- phone conference for the L.A. Podfest. I want to hear about that. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We'll hear about the rest of Grams. I try to stretch everything out. Fade it out. What if you did that? You tried to stretch your show out. So, no, Graham, you ready to get that music? Graham, how's everything been going in your career? Oh, just go just on the road. We'll find out more what's going on with Graham on the road. We'll be right back. All righty, so you've been on the road. Yeah, doing shows. I'm, you know, I'm going to the Helium Comedy Club September Helium 5th. Comedy Club. Yeah. We're going to find out about the Helium <laughs> Comedy Club. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> so you're down at the Helium Comedy Club. You like being on the road? It's great. Hold Phil. on. He says it's great. We'll find out how great it is right after this. 
All righty. What's the best part about being on the road? You know, the shows. The shows. We'll find out what he likes about the shows. We'll be right back. All righty. It's crazy out there. You've been good, Graham? I have been good. You're good spirits? (laughs) We're going to go to the traffic right now. Oh, right. You might have... Let's go to the traffic. The traffic guys out there. We're going to take a look at the traffic for the people on this beautiful Friday morning. How's it looking out there, Jerry? I go to Jerry's my oh, go-to. Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, let me give you another name. Uh, uh, give me a name for the traffic guy. Uh, uh, Johnny Colorado. Johnny, how's it looking up there? Hey, Sean. It's Johnny Colorado. We're uh, coming up here. We have a little bit of jackknife on the 405. Things are going to be slowing down. Going to b- buckle up out of the 118. That's going to hook into the 101. Looking smooth and sound out of the... Uh, oh, out hold, of the hold, on, hold on. Keep the traffic copter. What's uh, going on there? I, I don't... To tell you the truth, we, we pay a service for this, and I don't understand what you're saying. Speaking of a paid service, there's a... Uh, get up a cash truck that's buckled up in the 110 downtown up there in the Staples Center of the Convention Tide. going to take that out in. 605. No, 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 no. no. Oh, 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 Johnny, here. Johnny, Johnny. Okay, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Does anyone here in the studio, we pay a service for this. I don't understand what you're saying. So let's go a little bit of time. The 405. 405 buckled up out of the 101 that's going up. And the PCH is going to be a better alternative to go to the Malibu. That's what it's going down in. West Santa Monica, everything thing right no, there. No, 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 Airport's no, no. Airport's looking stop, good stop, stop, 105 stop. right into the terminal. Stop. Okay. I don't understand what you're saying. So maybe we should just go. You know, the 101. How's that look? Go slow. What a one looking jacked up all the way to the Burbank 134. Going to be your best bet as you back it lot into Burbank downtown looking good. I want to get 105, 110 to downtown. Bucking it through the middle side of the city. Orange County smooth and easy out out of San Diego. Stop, this stop, is brought stop, stop, by stop, Caltrans. stop. I don't understand the fucking thing you're saying. I could, 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 you, 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 could you hear me now? You yeah, hear- I gotta hear you ride perfectly. Yeah, I can't hear you. You just go, hey, run the plan, come on, run the one five. Got a guy coming on the plan. Oh, big update from Todd Glass. Apparently, we got some problems out of the one thirty four. Todd, we're gonna end right there. The Gardena gonna be bringing it all in. Thank you, everybody. This brought to you. He, he, under- by- he understands. I understand exactly me. what you said. I understood exactly what you said. That's the only time I understand you is when you talk. It's like cousin it. From- no, hold on. We do. We don't. Back to the bit. I, I got to be honest with you. You've been doing our traffic. We pay. You know what we pay a month to have you up there in this helicopter. What is the? Tr- we have people listening right now. If they're going to take the one, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm starting to get a little irritated here. I'm starting to get a little irritated because you. I, I talk. I'm nice. I'm kind, and you just go right back into doing what you're doing. Slow. Okay. You know what? I'm even going to go slower. When I say to slow down, do you understand what I mean? Slow bumper to bumper, one ten into downtown. Traffic gonna be jerked up, but it should be a fun saucy weekend. Got a nice pilot. Say our pilot Stevie Nelson on the Sky Copter Five. Brought to you by Buick and Glendale. <laughs> where you can always get a nice fast ride. Smooth on in on Izzy Freeway. Make it smooth that easy. Sky Five Chapter Stop. Stop. Johnny Stop. I'm not even joking around. Turn your helicopter off. <laughs> Turn it back on. <laughs> Turn it back on, Siri. Okay. Close your door. Do you have, do you have, a, do you have a door in the helicopter? Okay, there you go. So close your other door. Close your window. Close your window. I should barely hear that helicopter. Close. Okay. Uh, do, are you? Are you? Is everything okay? I'm talking to you now. We're not on the air. I took a break. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Turn your stereo off. Johnny. Are you okay? I'm talking to you. Everything's okay on the 710 freeway coming in from Orange County. They got it all in. Might be Bell Gardens is going to be a little bit of a change. What? That doesn't even make any sense. Everything said, making a sense. Tiny glass. Mind. Back to the Todd Glass Show. Todd will be at the 10. No, no, no. Every, I'm not stopping tonight. Every other day, I come back to my show. You said, ah, Bell Gardens. Yeah, come on. Oh, my- Bell Gardens got some trouble problems on the 10s and 20s. We'll be back with more Skycopter 5. we're going to do, uh, this is what we're going to do as we go to uh, close. This is our last thing. <laughs> now, we put a lot of pressure on it. Don't worry, I do things in post after the show, so mm, no pressure on you. Graham, it was nothing but a delight today. Libby, uh, p- slide on over to that mic real quick, hold if you on, don't mind. On. All right. Uh, can you lower this? It's not the right. Yeah, Libby, I can I can put it wherever you want. Okay, put it down a little bit. Uh, I don't have all day to do this with Libby, so just, just okay. hold the mic for okay. her. Okay. 
Well, is that is that good for yeah, her? That's fine. I, Libby, it's a quick question. You're Just shaking you... the mic a little too much. Libby, I'll, I'll put it in the mic stand and make it as smooth as you want. Okay, put it in the mic stand. The mic stand is kind of, there's a glare hitting the mic stand. It's kind of hurting my eyebrows. Here's where I'd like to go. We're, we, we just, we, we pulled up our tour dates, Libby, and before we go real quick. Uh, read some of these dates where we're going to be in Florida. Because you want to go to Florida. We just happen to pick the first two places in Florida. I'll go wherever you want to go. But you want to be in Florida. Love Florida. Okay, we just so we just nice. happen to pick a few places in Florida you don't like. Okay, wh- where are we going on the... Uh... We're going to Anna, Anna Maria. Say it really loud. Anna Maria, Florida. How about that? What are the dates? Uh, the 6th and 7th of January. Oh, January is a bad time. Then. Well, then where are we going after that? How about Atlantic Beach, Florida? Oh, Atlantic Beach is great. I'll go there. What what time are we going there? Well, we'll probably we'll probably leave at night for a, a show. Oh. We'll leave on the red eye. I can't take a red eye, Todd. You know that's gonna hurt. Boca my... Raton. Boca Raton. Well, my sister in law lives there, and she owns all the taffy stores. And <laughs> I just I don't I don't like well, it. What does taffy have to do with it? Well, it gets in my teeth, and then she. Well, you won't eat taffy. Well, she owns all the stores. Oh, she makes you. She makes everybody. She jams. Clearwater, taffy. Clearwater, Florida. How do you Clearwater, like that? Clearwater, Florida's got a weird breeze. It comes across, <laughs> and it it hurts well, my you, forehead. Well, Libby, I'm a, I, I love, love you. Florida. I, lo- I love you. Just and tell I me. I love you, Todd. You're wonderful. Me. I liked that helicopter man he said it so clearly i understood everything he said (laughs) all of the traffic it made such sense to me I really like it when it's concise and of you understand. Of course she likes it. Of course she did. It makes perfect sense to her. Right. Here's what we're going to do. I know we are. We are We are running in for the uh, descent here. I always thought, what would happen if we were DJs? <laughs> oh, I love being DJs. We have to be DJs in a city. This is I've done this premise a hundred times. And we have to talk into the... Someone sent me in. Again, this is one of the emails. Not anymore. I would have printed out this nice person's email and it would have been on this table in front of me. He explained what it meant when they talk into the, the bridge. If you resend it to me or I'll find it, I'll uh-huh. know. But don't think your emails, even something like that, falls on deaf ears. Somebody, there's a name for it in the business. They talk. Whoever's listening, they're going, I think that's fucking me. It's like the T-shirt guy. He goes, yeah, yeah. oh, a T-shirt guy emailed me. He goes, I, I know probably a lot of T-shirt guys email you. Is it me? The guy who emailed me and said, is it me? Yes, it's you. Only one person responded, so it was you. You're the T-shirt guy, so let's get in touch. So we're the DJs, and we have to talk into the, you know, in the song, when the words come on. Right. So, um, so you know, we'll, uh, but I thought we would get in trouble because I could picture us like we'd talk during the song maybe. Right. So do what you would do. Like, uh, play the, uh, the um, no, the, uh, the, um. Well, we'll do that last, where he talks into the bridge, okay? So just go, uh, let's see, uh, do, you, do you know how long these are? Yeah. So let's see, or do you want to try to do it without, without knowing how good you are? Like, play a song and see if he can talk into the, to, to the words come without knowing right. when it is. See how good he is. A laser 105, the Graham and Todd Muscle Hour. We're going to be rocking it all the way to the bottom half of the hour, so buckle up because we've got more. Katy Perry, Britney Spears, and the whole gang. Don't forget tickets for Lollapalooza this weekend. So this is what you are going to need. Whammy Laser 105. That was good. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Fade it out. What's the one with the shortest intro? Because I heard a guy today that, you know, I heard a guy, you know, that his p- people or the, the producer came in. He's, he's got like eight seconds. That's what they have him down to. Sure, but sure. What do you do when they come in and they go, you, eight seconds. You get, and here's what he said in between. I'll just, I'll, I'll probably have longer than eight seconds, but hear what he said. He, he goes, shorter. okay, play it, right? Here's what he said. Hey, someone asked me the other day if I was excited the weekend was here. I said I never met a weekend I didn't like. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> That guy, he figured out, what can I do in eight seconds? So good. That was hard, actually. Um, so uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do one more. You're talking to the bridge, and uh, it's uh, bad Leroy Brown. Do you have that one? Yeah. You know which one I'm talking about? And this is how we'll uh, take us out of here. You just got to talk into the bridge, and, um, and, here's, and, here's, and here it is. Okay. You ready? All righty. Thanks a lot. Everybody, this is our last thing. Is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Yeah. Uh, I will actually be headlining a Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. Name dropper. September 5th through the 8th. Chris Mancini, my co-host on Comedy Film Nerds, is the feature act. So Thursday, September 6th, we're doing a live Comedy Film Nerds recording in Helium Comedy Club. 
And, of course, you can go to heliumcomedy.com. And if you put in coupon code Elwood, you get $5 off the tickets. All my other two dates at GrahamElwood.com. And the L.A. Podfest with the Todd Glass Show and probably 15 other podcasts, October 12th through 14th, LAPodfest.com. The one thing you said about the podcast, the Podfest, that I think is going to be fun that people don't realize, there is going to be crossover because people are going to be able to come into yours and then we're going to be able to go over there. It's, it's going to be it's, it's going to be like if anyone ever heard about a comedy festival where the comedians have fun, I think this is going to be the first festival where it's the audience and the comedians sort of join together. There's going to be, when there's no more podcasts at night, Everyone's going to hang out. It's going to be such a blast. It is, it is going to be a like, lot of come fun. Come down, even t- like you. How about that? You're going to have a good time at the podcast festival. Everything's going to be really, really, really <laughs> Crystal City. And by the way, you're going to have a great time in Philadelphia at Helium. You've been there before. I love that. Close. My first time headlining there. I'm very excited. Jeff, the manager. Yeah, oh, Jeff's hilarious, man. I saw is. him at the Portland Comedy Club, and I didn't. I was like, "Who are you? I don't recognize you outside of Philly." Yeah, Mark, you, it's a, it's you a know, great club. Right. Mark Grossman, it's a good club. Mark Grossman is they're, they're, Sam, yeah, Levine, that, Sam Levine's going to be our guest on the podcast September sixth. So there you go. And then um, I think that's it. What do you have, Chris? What's that? Twitter at Chris Burdens. Is that your Twitter? Yeah. I like it. He's very very Twitter active oh, now. Mine's at Graham Elwood and okay. at LA Podcast. How'd your show go last night? Oh, it it was great. It was uh, great. Who yeah, who? Kyle Kinane. Kyle Kinane went on last Eric last Andre. night. Yeah. How'd he do? They did amazing. That's he always. did good. Will, thanks for the wiring. Wait, under... I want to promote the show. Line. Oh yes, yeah, go ahead. Odd Thursdays dot tum- dot com. And that's a, and I've said it every week. I'll say it again. It's or Facebook dot com slash Odd Thursdays. It's a, it's a great place to go see a show, and then get there early, eat some Chinese food. I say the same thing every week because you know what? At every the Palace t- in Los Feliz. Yeah, and it's so much nice. fun. There's a lot of great stand up places around LA now. I'm gonna start doing more characters in these shows in LA. Oh, you mean go up and do a character? Yeah, because I don't like doing regular. St- I get I do so much stand up on the road. I don't like doing it in, when I'm in LA because the sets are short or whatever. But I'm I, I'm going to do more characters. You know what? R- Rory does that, and it makes you want to. It <laughs> inspires me to go. Yeah. yeah, he went up one week as a character that he only had one arm yeah, and he played the gu- yeah, and he played <laughs> the guitar, but he so he really could. I, 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 there's this one character. I, I yeah, that's so great. I did this one hippie character. It's based on a real guy called Shim Shay. I did it at at uh, Comedy Death Ray several years ago, and I want to do him again and i have a bunch of dumb little characters i just want to go do for five minutes because it would be fun. fun to do irk thank you as always will for the wires uh darren uh e-comic branding thank you for sending uh as i told a lot of people i did not know tommy chung it was because you had mentioned that we were doing a sleepover and you sent him our way couldn't have made for a better he was you know he was great you know we have a lot of stuff we didn't even make it onto the podcast but we're going to release it like in a in a few weeks some bonus footage you know because uh he was he was fun to talk to i, I was getting a kick out of every moment of him so then we got that this and um uh so uh so uh uh okay here we go so your first day on the job and uh and uh you'll talk into the bridge Folks, buckle up. It's going to be a big rock and roll weekend. This down at the drive-in. Everything you need, buddy. Bring the kids. Bring the flowers. Buckle it up because it's going to be the whammy summer rock and roll weekend. Bring the kids because they're going to have a wonderful time. Everyone's going to be there. Don't forget we're going to be giving out whammy frisbees and coolers and everything else. And first other people are going to get a whammy hat. Enter the raffle to get a whammy rock and roll boat trip weekend. We're going to be going to the Caribbean. The whammy cruise every year. This is going to be the one that you and your kids are going to love. So let's buckle it up. Whammy 105.6 FM. Rocking from the coast to the inland to the mountain to the downtown. This is the one you're going to be, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up, put some nitro in it because this weekend is going to rock and roll. At at this point, the the station manager whispers in your headset, there's something wrong with the fucking... uh, uh, And and you got to save the show. You got to talk. You got to keep talking So because we're having a problem. He whispers that in your ear. The audience doesn't hear this. Folks, I just want to say right now how how glad I am that I got to be brought into the Whammy family and to be on these great halls of fame rock and rollers and i'm gonna do my best to bring the rock and roll to you to the people i'm gonna be doing as many live events as i can i'm gonna be out in las vegas for whammy fest we're gonna be gambling all morning dude and night so bring your famous whammy gear bring it on down with whammy goes west to the vegas okay we're gonna take it away from you one second we're gonna go up to the guy uh, johnny colorado in the traffic copter johnny go ahead while we're waiting for the words to come on 
Uh, thanks, Chad. It's Chad Abel here. Helen Calvert, uh, we're just what we realized is we got a little bit of a problem here. What a what? Uh, just had a spilled milk truck, so you're going to be milkshaking. You're all the way up and down with the valley. Burbank smooth on the 134, and you got into the Gardena. Don't forget to head it all down to the 210. What the 210 is going to get you is going to get you a lot of fast lanes. You get all down 15 north, jacked up right near Victorville. Victorville take alternative routes. I would have suggested 99 to the 63 to the 14. Everybody going to be down there. Back to a Golden Graham of the Whammy Studios. All right, thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. It's so nice to be here in the Whammy Rock and Roll. Don't forget this weekend, we're going to have Todd Glass in the studio and Jerry Simon was a witness relocation. Or is he? We don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget George Carlin's ghost is going to be here. They're going to be rocking and rolling the whole time. Break the family. Also, we got the Whammy Softball Tournament. The Whammy Girls are going to be down there having a jello party, if you know what I mean. Jello party. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's about as long as you can do it. Uh, everybody, Graham Elwood, goodbye. Thank you so much. Oh. When you're weary Feeling small When tears are in Your eyes I will draw them I won't go Oh
you hear with headphones in your ear there's a lot of show left so stay right here Hi everybody, this is another episode of Boy Am I Glad I Had My Be Nice Mug. Each week we hear different stories about people that were about to do something bad and they saw a Be Nice Mug and it made them uh, do the right thing. People that listen to this show uh, send us voicemails on the phone and uh, you know mine, last week a neighbor of mine, she told me that my car was going to get a ticket and uh, as she was leaving I was going to push her into the dirt. But then I saw my Be Nice mug and I just thanked her. There's another gentleman that has a story about his Be Nice mug. These are real people with real stories. The other day, a guy cut me off in traffic and I was going to yell at him and scream at him, but I just took my Be Nice mug and I threw it right at his head. Wait, that's not what you... That's not, that's not exactly what you're looking for. Is, is it, that's not exactly what you're looking for. Do another one for okay. But by the way, that's, that's a great okay. Do it like that or like that. Do, a, do a real one. Not a real one. Okay, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, uh, hi, this is another episode of Thank Goodness I Had My Be Nice Mug. These are real people with real stories. Here's my story about the Be Nice Mug. The other day, somebody cut me off at Wawa. I was really angry, but I saw I was half holding my Be Nice Mug, and I said, you know what? Just let him go through, because he's going to be nice. These are real stories from real people. Buy your Be Nice Mug now at Toddglass.com. It's going to save your life. We guarantee it. feeling low, instead of feeling so, just remember that show. Hey, here comes another time, let show. Hey, 